are you still hard coding user logins or struggling with outdated authentication methods in today's job market companies expect developers to integrate modern secure login system and google o2 is at the top of that list in this tutorial i'll walk you through setting up google login in your spring boot application step by step from generating your client id and client secret to configuring spring security all with real world example that recruiters love to see by the end of this video you won't just know how to add google sign in you will understand the why behind every step helping you stand out in interview and level up your backend skills let's dive in and future proof your java project let's start by creating a new spring boot project go to start dot spring dot io this is the online tool from where we can create spring boot project easily here i am going to create a maven project my programming language is java for the spring boot version i am selecting 3.4.2 which is the latest version at the time of the recording your version may be deferred based on the time when you are watching this video then provide the project metadata first the group name it is basically the domain name in reverse order mine is com dot learn with if they care then artifact name spring google auth 2 demo then the packaging it's jar and the java version is 21 now it's time to add dependencies click on this add dependencies button the first dependency that i need is spring web and we also need another dependency search for oauth here you can see we have these three libraries available for this oauth2 here we need this oauth2 client those are all the dependencies we need for now now click on the generate button to generate the project our project is generated and downloaded as a zip file go ahead and open it in your favorite id here i have opened it in intellij idea now let's check our pom.xml file here is the metadata that we have defined and those are the dependencies that we have included we have included only two dependencies this is auth to client and this one is spring web we have also another dependency included in this pom file that is spring boot starter test now let's navigate to our project expand src main java expanding the sidebar a little bit this is our main package here we'll put all of our java codes currently you can see we have this java class spring google auth 2 demo application let's open it here this class contains the main method let's run the project we can run the project by clicking on this play icon beside this main method or we can also click this play icon that is showing beside this class name we have another option to run the project that is this play icon at the top let's use this our project has started making the console a little bigger here in the console you can see that tomcat started on port 8080 let's access it in our browser localhost the server is running on port 8080 here we have this default login form provided by spring security but we have not added spring security in our dependency so how we are getting this form let's minimize the console opening the pom.xml file here let's check the dependencies that are included with this oauth 2 client command and click on this if you are using mac or control and click if you are using pc a new pom file is opened this is the pom file of this spring boot starter oauth 2 client all the dependencies needed for this library is declared here let's scroll down to check the list of dependencies included there here you can see this spring security code is included with this dependency that's why by including this o2 client dependency spring security is automatically available with our project let's close this pom file and open the console here no password is generated for us we need to define the credentials by ourselves in this tutorial my focus is on showing how to authenticate your spring boot application with google login so i don't want to complicate it i am going to define a static username and password for this project expand this resources library 
inside this we have this application dot properties file this is the file where we define our project specific configurations right now i am going to define a default username and password for this application for this we need a property spring security user name give it name user and for password let's copy this up to user and paste it below then dot password give it a dummy password now we can log in our application with this username and password in this example i have hard coded the user credentials however if you are interested in learning more advanced spring security concepts such as using a real database for user authentication check out my other video tutorial in that tutorial i explained how to register and authenticate users using a real database to store user information you will find a link to the video in the description below with that let's start the project back to the browser refreshing the page here provide the username and password that we have defined sign in here we have successfully signed in currently we are getting this white label error page that is because we have not defined any endpoint in our application to process this request let's define one inside this base package creating a new java class hello controller here annotate this class with rest controller this annotation tells spring that this java class should act as rest resource allowing it to handle http request and return response directly inside this class add a get request mapping maybe it for our root url add a public method hello and this method returns a string hello world start the server again refresh the page give the username and password and sign in now we have this response from our controller so at this point Let's log out first. Log out. At this point, we have this form where we can use our username and password to log in. Now, I want to add a feature that allows user to log in with Google. With this feature, users can simply click a link or button to authenticate using their Google account. This will provide a more flexible login option. Back to the ID. Here, I am now going to override some of the default configuration of Spring Security. Here, inside the base package, create a new Java class security config give it annotation at configuration we need another annotation enable web security inside this class we need a bin of type security filter chain this method accepts http security i need to import this security filter chain class and this http security return http dot build before this return statement, we need to define specific security configurations. HTTP dot first, I want to configure HTTP request authorization rule. Inside this method, lambda expression request, any request needs to be authenticated. This configuration ensures that any request made to the application must be authenticated. After that, we need another security configuration, OAuth to login. Keep it with default customizer dot defaults now start the project here's our application failed to start here it is saying that um, client registration repository could not be found this happens because we have not yet configured our application to connect with google for authentication to fix this we need to provide a necessary configuration so that spring security knows how to communicate with google's OAuth 2 service Specifically, we need to add properties like the client ID and client secret obtained from the Google Developer Console. These credentials allow Google to recognize our application and handle the authentication process securely. Once added, Spring Security can manage the OAuth 2 flow properly. Closing the tabs, here in this application.properties file, I'll provide the Google client ID and client secret. You can do that using the following property key, Spring Security. O2 client registration then our O2 provider name Google and then we want to give client ID I am keeping it blank for now because I have not generated the client ID yet but don't worry I'll show you how to get it from Google in the next steps another property is the secret key let's copy this and Google client secret now let's generate those credentials to get those credentials from Google, search for 
Google Cloud Console. The first result is an ad. Let's scroll down. We are going to use this link console.cloud.google.com. Click here. Currently, this is my brand new Google Console. First, I need to create a project. Click on this select project button. Then new project. Give it a project name Spring Google Login Demo and create. Wait for some time. Our project is created. Now select the project. Here is our project selected. From the sidebar, go to the API and services, credentials. Here we can create our credentials for the application. Click on this create credentials. Choose OAuth client ID. Here we need to configure the consent screen. Let's configure it. Get started. Here in this app information section, we need to give an app name, giving a name, then giving my email address as support email. Next, in the audience section, select external. Click next in the contact email address, giving my email address. Finally, we need to agree to the Google's API service user's data policy. Before proceeding, make sure to read the policy carefully to understand how user data should be handled when using Google's API. If you are agree with the terms, simply mark the checkbox to confirm your agreement. And finally, create. It will take a couple of seconds to process. It's complete. Now let's go back to the client section and click on create client. You might see a prompt asking you to create the console screen again, even though we have already set it up. Don't worry, this is common. Simply refresh the page and it should work fine. Alright, now it's working. Next, we need to specify the application type. Here, you'll see several options like web application, Android, Chrome extension, and many more. Since we are building a web application, we'll select web application from the list. Next, we need to give a name to our OAuth2 client. This can be any name you prefer. I am giving it an arbitrary name just for identification purpose. Now, let's scroll down. Here, we need to provide the authorization redirect URI. And this part is important. The authorized redirect URI is where Google will redirect the user after they successfully authenticate. This URI must match exactly with what your application is expecting. Otherwise, the authentication will fail. For local development, this is usually something like HTTP, localhost, then the port 8080, login, for a slash, OAuth2, for a slash, code, and as this is for our Google, so we need to provide here Google. Now click create. Our client is now created. Here is our client ID. Let's click on this to open the details. Here is our client secret and client ID. Let's start by copying the client ID. Head over to the application.properties file in our project and paste the client ID. Now we also need the client secret. Let's go back and copy it from our Google console. Then paste it into the application.properties file in the client secret property. That's it. Now run the application. Our application is started successfully. Back to the browser. Navigate to our application step. Update a URL. Here you can see we have this option to sign in with Google. But I also want to keep the traditional username and password login options alongside the Google sign in. To enable this, let's head back to the IDE. Open the security config class. Inside the security filter chain method, where we are configuring HTTP security, we need to add an additional option to support traditional username and password login. Right after the existing configurations, type form login. This enable form based login. Since I am going with the default settings, there are no need to customize anything for now. So calling customizer dot with defaults. With this change, users will now have both options. They can either sign in with Google or use the standard username and password form. Let's check it now in action. Back to the browser. Refresh. Here you can see we now have both options available. The traditional sign in form and O2 login with Google. Let's first test the username and password login. I will enter the credentials and click on sign in. And login was successful. Now let's test the Google O2 login. Log out. Logged out successfully. Now let's click on the Google login options. It has redirected me to the Google account login page. Here you can see it's displaying our application's name, confirming that Google recognized our app. 
I'm going to select my email to proceed. Clicking on it, on the next screen, click continue. And there you go. We have successfully logged in into our applications using Google Auth 2. The message you see here is coming straight from our REST controller, confirming that everything is working perfectly. And there you have it. Your Spring Boot application is now fully integrated with Google Auth 2, giving users a modern and secure way to log in. But this is just scratching the surface of what Spring Security can do. If you want to dive deeper and explore more advanced features like user registration, role-based access control, or even JWT authentication, make sure to check out my other video on Spring Security. I have got plenty of hands-on tutorials that walk you through real-world use case. The link to my Spring Security playlist is in the description below. Keep building, keep learning, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.